And we welcome you to D2EastHoops.org, the 2016-2017 Central Atlantic Collegiate Conference Women's Basketball Season Preview. Alongside Steve Zerdelian and Chris Granozio, Don Famolo pushing the buttons, I'm Tim McCaffrey. And guys, the CACC North, it's been the Bloomfield Bears for the last number of years, an 18-1 and league record last year, 24-8 and overall. They lost in the CACC final to Philadelphia a year ago. They got an NCAA bid and got their first win in the tournament, and Dave Caputo thinks that their team is going to be right back where they were last season. Uh, I equate Bloomfield with a, with a child who's just putting building blocks one upon the other. And then you look you look back after about 15 minutes and you see a whole bunch of blocks and you see a big building. <laughs> so year by year, they've done something else to move the, the needle forward. And I think they're doing that again this year. Uh, they've got a terrific player in Tiana Smith back, the ECC co-player of the year. Last winter averaged 17 points a game and other key players back, uh, Deja uh, DJ McKenzie, Morgan Taylor, uh, among others. Uh, yeah, they've lost some key players. Uh, Ariel Wilson was a was a very dependable backcourt player, and China Golden was a uh, a plus uh, in the middle. Uh, the returners are good. The newcomers could make a big difference, and I think Bloomfield is a team that's looking to uh, to get themselves ready during the regular season for the postseason. Well, defense has always been uh, the staple for this club since Dave Caputo took over. Three transfers will join uh, the returners, as you mentioned, and also a freshman point guard that could be a difference maker. And uh, already D2 Bulletin is uh, naming the Bears as a team to watch outside the top 25, and they certainly could live up to that expectation. As we continue to preview the CACC North in the order they finished last year, if Bloomfield's a solid number one in the North, then Caldwell looks to be a solid number two. I'd almost call Caldwell a one, one and a half, uh, the way this is. I mean, this is a team that won 21 games a year ago, uh, lost one key player, but they have four back who average double figures. Uh, they may have the best offense in the CACC. They could definitely score. Uh, you look at Kristen Drogsler, averaged 14 a game, was a second-team all-league pick. Uh, Antoinette Pilla, Carly O'Driscoll, and Sherelle Sanders all average in double figures. Uh, and even though Nicole Angelo uh, moves on, this is a team that, that knows how to score, that uh, they can get up and down the floor. The key here for Caldwell is not winning, but they need to win the key games because they haven't taken that final step to get them to ECC uh, prominence and to get into the NCAA tournament. That's the challenge for Christina Danella. Yeah, that's 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 always been the key for them, and uh, they get closer and closer. A couple of years ago, almost uh, made it to the next round, but uh, lost on a half court buzzer beater to Philadelphia University. So uh, this is a team that has had a lot of close calls, but maybe like the Chicago Cubs, maybe one day it'll all turn around for them and they'll they'll get to the NCAA tournament. They're too good not to one of these years. The Chargers of Dominican College, a 14-15 and 15 season a year ago, and if there's a team that we think is locked into their position, it might be Dominican. Is there any way they don't finish third in the CACC North, Steve? Uh, you know, maybe massive injuries or, or you know, some serious slumps, but uh, Bill Diener's club, uh, 14 wins a year ago. They lost Deja Gabadon, uh, who was an excellent all-around player, 17.5 points and 10.5 rebounds a game last year, uh, earned her first team all-league honors. But you turn around it and see uh, some, some solid players back, the likes of Lisa Buffard and Rebecca Ribeiro uh, had good seasons. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're in a position here where on paper, Chris, they're, they're not as good as the teams above them, but they're definitely better than the teams behind them. Yeah, Gabadon is is a, a major uh, minus uh, losing her, and so they'll have, have to have some players step up. But uh, Bill Diener certainly is a uh, an experienced coach who's uh, done very well with this team the last couple of years, and uh, I, I think you're right. They're 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 set to be that uh, that next tier down from the Bloomfield Caldwell Northern Jersey connection. The bottom of the CACC North is a who's that last season. 4-27 and 27 in non-league games. Basically, the only teams they beat were each other. We start with a 7-20 and 20 team in Nyack that made the CACC conference tournament with a 7-20 and 20 record, we mentioned. What does Nyack do to get better? Oh, they're going to have to do something because they lost four of their top five scorers. Uh, only Kelly Smoot, who averaged seven, uh, seven and change per game, is back. Uh, Jamie McKee there and Raven Makins, uh, who averaged uh, 27 points between them, um, are among the departees. So uh, there's some rebuilding to be done for David Julian. Chris uh, got a lot of new faces, so that's where the hope lies. 
Yeah, the, uh, David Julian's got uh, his work cut out for him. Um, it's been a, kind of a treadmill for Nyack over the last few years. They've been trying to, you know, get better, but uh, they're for every step forward they take, they take a couple of steps back, and they just can't seem to quite get up to playoff uh, or just past that first round of the playoffs. And uh, they're going to need to do something to to get that uh, next step going. And this could be the year that they finally make that, uh, that move. Uh, well, nine newcomers, including four transfers that, that that's where it all lies there. And we're not going to know the answer until the season really gets into the, the heart of, uh, January, I would say in recent vintage, the best player on the post university Eagles was Taj Williams. No relation is the, the head coach of post university. Taj Mick Williams, Franklin was a team that struggled to score last season and struggled to win games they did end the year nearly making the playoffs at 4-24. and 24. But most people think this team is a team on the rise, Steve. The reason why is because they won four of their last nine games. So uh, it was a struggle, obviously, before that, but they went 4-5 and five in their last nine. Uh, they do have almost everybody back, including Tyra Jones, who led the, uh, the, the, the top returning scorer at 10.5 points a game. But having all those players back isn't great if they duplicate some of the things they did last year statistically. That really held them back. Yeah, one of those being uh, a lack of scoring, just about 54 points per game. And early on when they started off 0-19, they turned it over more than they scored. Um, and they finished with about 19 uh, miscues a game. They're going to have to really diminish that number if they want to make a rise up the uh, ladder in the North Division. The Clippers of Concordia finished 4-22 and in the CACC North last season, 2-17 and in the league. What does Concordia have to look forward to, Steve Z? Uh, they've, got some, they've got some proven players back uh, that, that, uh, that can score. Jessica Rosalbo and uh, Julianne Wilkinson averaged double figures a year ago, and, and uh, Hadia Black also had a solid season. Uh, scoring was an issue, though, for the Clippers, uh, only 55 points a game, and uh, they pretty much have to improve across the board. But uh, lots of new faces in for them as well, Chris, as uh, the Clippers try to find a way to uh, get going in the right direction. Yeah, six newcomers uh, will have to step up for Christy Tomasino's club. They have one key loss in, in Khadijah Donaldson, but other than that, uh, this, is a, this is a group that uh, – that has to work together and uh, can try to make some strides, baby steps along the way for Concordia as they try to get to a, um, uh, to a, a higher win total. Holding up the rest of the CACC North last year was Felician. They finished the year at 2-24, and 24, the same league record as the Concordia Clippers. The Golden Falcons finished 2-27 and 27 in the league. Steve Fagan's club, 2-17 and 17 in the league. Steve Fagan's club really struggled last season and, not much uh, to really score. 53 points, five new faces, two transfers. Does it help them win more games? Uh, yeah, I feel like we're saying this over and over with some of these uh, teams that are struggling in the, the North Division. Uh, Shyla Osman, though, had a good season last year, averaged a dozen points a game. Uh, they're going to have to overcome the loss of Eliana Scanlon, who was their leading scorer, at 13 points per game. Uh, but uh, Felician uh, is, is in the same boat with some of these other clubs. Really, you get back to fundamentals and uh, cut down the turnovers uh, to try to find a rotation that works and see if you can uh, move forward uh, in small doses that's really how you how you get things going uh and move forward for steve fagan's club that continues us uh, we'll continue along now on d2easthoops.org that concludes the north of the cacc alongside steve zardellian and chris granozio i'm tim mccaffrey we head to the south where last season the philadelphia rams tom shirley's club finished 18 and 1 in the league and 25 and 7 overall they won the cacc tournament got an ncaa bid can Tom Shirley's team win the South again, Steve? Uh, they certainly can. Uh, they have enough players back to, to do that, although uh, their losses are pretty significant. Uh, looking at that first, CACC co-player of the year, Bria Young, is gone, uh, first-team All-Star and averaging 14.5 a, a game. Uh, their post presence in Tori Arnao, uh, 13 and 10 a game. She's gone. And Mary Newell, who, who quietly averaged 13 and a half points a game, also gone. But uh, the Rams have a way of regenerating every year. Uh, it's almost like on the men's side where you've got your, quote, stars who are upperclassmen and some underclassmen that do well. And then when their turn comes, they're ready. And I think that's the case here for Philadelphia. You look at Rachel Day, an excellent perimeter scorer. 
averages double figures. Uh, Jessica Kaminsky was a player who showed lots of promise last year. And, uh, you know, this is a team that will be challenged to get those players into more significant roles, but uh, that's definitely not beyond them. No, Tom Shirley uh, does have a lot to work with still. Um, also, Jackie McCarron and Kelsey Jones are back. But you mentioned Bria Young. Uh, not only was she the player of the year in the league and a great offensive player, but she was defensive player of the year, too, in the uh, CACC. So, uh, so some losses for sure, but there's uh, plenty coming back. And Tom Shirley's an excellent coach uh, with tons of wins uh, under his belt. So I think uh, certainly they could be one of the top contenders in the CACC again. Much like the CACC on the men's side, the women's side featured four teams last season from the Philadelphia area that made the conference tournament. The team expected to also contend for an NCAA bid this year. The Holy Family, the Lady Tigers, with a new head coach, 22-9 and record last season, but a new head coach and some new players. Yeah, Melissa Dunn takes over for uh, Mark Miller, who uh, took the job at South Carolina Aiken. Uh, and there's uh, lots to be excited about uh, for the Tigers. So they do lose Aaron Finningham, who was the second team, uh, all CACC pick in the backcourt, uh, Casey Wetzel up front. But uh, like I said, plenty of good players back. Jill Conroy I like as a perimeter player. Abigail Iannotti is uh, ready to assume the role of a double-double machine up front. And... Uh, uh, you know, good depth as well. Uh, you know, I like what Holy Family has. Uh, Melissa Dunn has a great track record as a Division One assistant, and she, she's more than ready to take the reins. Uh, there's, there's a number of coaching changes in the region this year on the women's side, and a couple of them follow the same uh, model, and uh, Melissa Dunn fits into that as, as a longtime D1 assistant coach who uh, has a great pedigree and should do well with this club. And she's also a Philly native, which helps. She'll know the uh, recruiting uh, pipelines for sure. And also uh, among the players that return that uh, – I liked uh, were the sister act of Kylie and Kelly Guideman, uh, who averaged nine and a half points a game apiece. Uh, that they and also some freshmen, four to be exact, will uh, add some size and some depth for the Tigers. One of the problems the CACC has been plagued with in recent years is non-conference winning percentage. The University of the Sciences Devils were the best example of that in the league. They won 11 games last season in the league. They were 0-10 outside of the league doesn't do you much good in the conference when you're losing just about everybody outside of it. But Jackie Hartzell's club two years ago was quite strong in contending for an NCAA tournament bid. Can the Sciences be a pretender or a contender this season, Steve? You know, I think they could be a contender, at least in the sense that they'll be better this year. I'm not sure they're quite seasoned enough to challenge the top two in this division. But, you know, they were young last year, ended strong. They went seven of their last ten. They've got four of their top five scorers back, including Alex Thomas, a third-team all-league pick, uh, pick who averaged over 12 points a game. And there's there's something good happening here with uh, with the sciences, and I like what they have. They could be a team that opens some eyes this year, Chris. Yeah, they also bring back Sarah Abenizio, Laura Trish, and Marissa Sylvester, who uh, certainly made their presences felt last season. Megan Wolf, the only key loss. Jackie Hartzell did a very nice job with this club as they improved as the season went along last year, and if they can pick up right where they left off, they will be certainly in prime position to make the playoffs and make some noise late in the season. A couple of years ago, Cheston Hill decided to go West, young man, and they hired Michael West, who's led the program to a 12-15 and 15 season last year and a team that, after a 3-9 and nine start, contended in the CACC South and contended against some of the better teams on occasion. Is this a year that Chestnut Hill can break through and maybe contend for a little more in the CACC South, Steve? Uh, they have what it takes to be a winning team. There's no doubt about that. Actually, there should be some real excitement among the Philadelphia contingent uh, in this league. This could be a really interesting group here. Chestnut Hill has basically everybody back. Uh, including Rookie of the Year Jada Wildgoose, who was a third-team all-league all league pick, averaged over 13 points and eight boards a game last year. But you know, there's lots of good scoring with uh, uh, Katie Cunin, uh, Mary Trossi, Brittany McDonough, uh, and some good depth as well. So that, uh, th- that season last year where they took their lumps early and then uh, got things going later on, I think that's going to – that gave them a little taste of what could be for this year, and I'd be excited if I was a Griffins fan. I really would. The new old, the new old head coach for Wilmington, Rob Miller, fourteen and fourteen a year of, a year ago. Rob Miller's back. Are the Wildcats? Well, I, you know, I think they may have to take a step back to take a step forward. Uh, losing Tanisha Spence, who averaged fifteen points a game, uh, as well as Ashley Broadwater, who averaged almost ten a game. So the top two scores are gone. Uh, but they've got some good players back, uh, and there's there's a possibility here that uh, they could approach last year's win total. It'll be a, a competitive division, I'll say that. So they they may uh, they may do 
fairly well considering the losses, but uh, I'm not sure the record will reflect it. The top returners coming back for Wilmington are Zamiria Jones, who averaged just over nine points a game, Macy Robinson, Ebony Dixon, and Emma Matthews. But uh, they're going to uh, need some help if they're going to uh, get back to 500 this year. The leading scorer in the Central Atlantic Collegiate Conference last year, Lexi Bruno, returns for the Goldie Beacom Lady Lightning but can they return to the playoffs, Steve Z? Well, we'll see. Uh, Beth Ann Burke's got a terrific pair in uh, Lexi Bruno and Brittany Bryson, first and third team all league players, respectively. Uh, Lexi Bruno's one of those players in this region, and you can look in each league and see one or two uh, uh, players that just can kind of do everything. They can score, they create, they rebound, they can shoot a little, little and they can defend as well. And, uh, uh, you know, Lexi Bruno's going to be key to how the Lightning end up doing this year. Um, They've got eight newcomers, though. See, this is the interesting variable for Goldie Beacom. Uh, two of them are from Spain. One is from Italy. So how the international players and how the eight newcomers fit in, who knows, really? Who knows what's going to happen with this team? But, I, you know, I think there's enough there to really get excited about. And there is a chance that it could really all click together. And uh, this could be a really, con- a, a very, very interesting team to keep an eye on. It seems like it's been decades since Georgian Court made a playoff appearance is this the year the 6-21 and 21 Lions can finally get into the top four in the south of the CACC, Steve? Uh, it's a very difficult landscape to do so, but uh, they can be optimistic because uh, four of their five top scorers are back. Uh, Jada Atchison averaging over 12 a game. Jalen Tweedy, Destiny Thompson, and uh, Jess Plack are also black. Uh, they did lose Aaliyah Berger, however. She averaged 17 points a game, so that'll be something that they'll have to deal with. They're also going to have to get better defensively, Chris, uh, and do a better job on the glass. Yeah, defensively last year they allowed 74 points a game, and they were a minus eight on the glass. Uh, they have some freshmen to uh, bolster the roster, five in fact, and uh, some of those are some some big bodies. So that'll help, but uh, Georgian Court has a long way to go before they can um, surpass respectability. Now, the CACC last year got a record three teams in for, for their conference into the NCAA tournament, but it was a disappointing finish in the NCAA tournament once they got there. Do they duplicate that this year, or do they fall back a step? It's going to be tough for them to get three. I mean, it's possible. Uh, you know, I think Bloomfield has got a really good shot to, to return. I, and I like Holy Family's group. I, th- I think they've got a really good chance to return. Philly's going to have to, to find some different roles for other people to uh, to do that. And Caldwell, we've talked about Caldwell being the variable. That, close, but they and they need more quality wins. So I'm not sure they get three back again. But uh, that south race is going to be really interesting. And, and Steve, it's a double-edged sword for Caldwell in that if post-Concordia, Felician, and Nyack don't improve, they do get eight wins in the process to Caldwell, but not a lot of power points that help them come NCAA tournament time. Yeah, unfortunately, they're stuck in that situation that they can't really do anything about. Uh, you know, the, uh, All they can do is win the games that are put in front of them and try to schedule well outside of the league and win those games. If they can do that, they give themselves a shot. Obviously, if they can do well in the tournament, the CACC tournament, and win the automatic bid, they don't have to worry about strength of schedule. Uh, easier said than done, though. The, the, this conference remains competitive, especially on the south side and right at the top of the north side. I think Bloomfield and Holy Family, to underscore points, uh, the points Steve made, are, are the uh, two teams that are probably the closest to locks for the NCAA tournament. Um, I think if there's a sleeper, uh, it probably is called well because I think uh, they're like the Susan Lucci. They keep on getting nominated every year. They get close and close and close. And one of these <laughs> They have to break through and win the thing and, and get to the NCAA tournament. So if there is a third one, I'm going to say Caldwell gets in this year. Philadelphia, possibly, but uh, they lose a lot, so it's going to be a little tougher road for them. I'm going out on a limb. I'm saying the surprise team, not only in this league, but in the region, is Chestnut Hill. Yeah, they might. They, they're, they're certainly uh, they're well, certainly ready well, to do prime We're going to circle back with you in March, Tim. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm usually wrong, so there's, there'll be no worries, Steve. Except on Chestnut Hill, if you say you're usually wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, for their sake, I, I, we hope they're right. And that wraps us up on the D2EastHoops.org 2016-2017 Central Atlantic Collegiate Conference Women's Basketball Season Preview. Thanks so much for joining us. On behalf of Steve Zerdellian and Chris Granozio, Don Famolo manning the controls, I'm Tim McCaffrey. Stay with us for other season previews right here on D2EastHoops.org. Almost 13.